All right guys, welcome back. Today we're playing with the downpipe and the dump tube on the Mustang. Uh, we, I'm gonna go through the processes of showing you my little jigs that I have to cut the bends. I'm gonna pull down my box of bends, see what we already got ready for us maybe. Probably not, that's not how it usually goes, but we'll see. Already we can tell off the first bat, it's on a cool angle. I always like the little angle on the turbos, it looks cool, it's kind of a flex. So we're gonna have a small little 25, 20 degree-ish coming out pop a 90 down, leave room on the wastegate. I'll get Matt to do some close-ups in there and just kind of show the area that we're working with. It's not the tightest, definitely put stuff in way harder to access places. Nice. Um, but overall, it's gonna be pretty straightforward, just like that intercooler pipe we just whipped up. All right, so let's get to it. Yeah, dude, so uh, this exhaust got hit by a manhole cover at some point of its life, so, uh, we're gonna fix that. <laughs> it's really like, oh, I'll, when I actually get it all the way down, I'll show you all the damage on it, but she's pretty muffed up. So I'm just gonna cut it off so I now have my new area of where I'm going to. So, Sawzall's back in action, baby. Get a little more light in there for you. There we go. Look at that. Well, it's kind of inconvenient to get out. All right, so we got my three inch 304 stainless bends and straights box down. And I already have a lot of pieces ready to rock. So in here we got a 90, 45. We got a little straight, we got a long straight. I already kind of just held them up in there. Oh yeah, and we got a mid, little bit longer straight. So we got some stuff to start rocking with. I just keep a lot of off cuts, small little bends and stuff like that that I cut out of bends. But that just means we don't really have to do anything from the get-go. So <laughs> I'm going to clean up these on the belt sander real quick. And I'm going to pull off the flange off the turbocharger because I already know for sure I'm going to have this 45 bend sitting on an angle off of it. Going to have some sort of a straight off of it. And then we're going to have the 90 tucking down. Once I start one piece, I'm kind of committed in, which I'm very committed to this one. I know that's gonna work perfect. So then I can hold my 90 in, line up my sections. This one's probably gonna work perfect on the bottom of the 90. So again, I'm just gonna preemptively start cleaning up the pieces that I think I'm gonna use. So do that quick, bring it all back over. Actually, I'll bring it to the bench quick, tack a couple pieces, then I can bring it back to the car and we can start rocking. The belt sander here back on the fab, fab bench. And I'm just gonna use my favorite, I got a little carbide bit and a little sandpaper, sandpaper flapper disc that goes on the inside. These are killer. Milwaukee, sponsor me, please. <laughs> I love your stuff. Um, it's addictive. Uh, these are awesome, these little die grinders. Uh, I just pulled off this little flapper disc attachment on it. You can do so many things with these little tools, whether it's polishing, metal finishing, they're just great. Same with the little hand, hand orbital sander. These are great. Anyways, back to business. We're gonna clean up these tubes on the inside. I just get rid of this edge with the carbide because it's stainless. This is what this is made for, not so much aluminum. This just cleans up the edge. So yeah, we got those all cleaned up how we like them. Again, I'm looking at, I always just take a quick look at it, see if there's any more edging and stuff on them. Probably just gonna give it a little on the sander one more time. Take the V-band off of the car. Matt will just B-roll that real quick. Maybe we'll put some sick music over, whatever. People don't like grind it and stuff, apparently. You gotta grind stuff, that's just part of it. Prep is everything. So spend your time, take care of the tubes, take care of everything, and just keep jamming. You gotta just focus on what you're doing. It can get pretty, uh, the time can add up pretty quick and you feel like you're not getting anywhere. Just get in the zone, relax, do whatever makes you feel good, you know? Take care of the tubes and they'll take, take care, care of you. Yeah, dude, you just gotta love them. Love them all, man. Every little one of them. Just bring them over here. Oh, shit. Get out of here. Help. Oh, my God. Yeah! <laughs> Public service announcement. I guess PSR turbos come with these, ugh, can't swear, these not good at all clamps. Like if you look, I don't know Matt, you can zoom in. One time use, you use it and it just takes all the thread off. That's why you need to get a proper clamp. Vibrant Performance, a few other companies also offer these. 
It's not a one-time use clamp. You can undo it, you can clip it on and off. It's, it's beautiful. These are trash. Trash, just throw it in the trash. Like I literally did it up once and it just chewed all the threads. So don't use those, they suck. Use good stuff. We're back, we're at the bench. We got some tubes. Tubes and clamps, clamps and tubes. I already know this 45 is gonna work perfect. This is probably the only nice piece that came with that flange assembly there. <laughs> We're going to tack our 45 bend to the V-band flange that will then clamp with a good clamp on the back of the turbo. Cause we need to take stuff on and off, on and off. So it's like, you can't struggle with stuff. You want good quality components. Use a nice clamp, use nice V-band flanges. Again, this is the proprietary flange that comes with this turbocharger. It happens a lot, a lot of flanges. A lot of turbochargers have different flanges on it. Uh, vibrant performance, you look through the book, you can kind of see there's a lot of offering of different types of these flanges for Garrett turbos, Borg Warner turbos. I will cut the housings and weld my own V-band flanges to it a lot of the time on Borg Warner turbos. It won't come with a V-band flange on it. It will come with like a Mormon or a Marmon. I'm pretty sure it's Marmon. I don't think it's Mormon. <laughs> it's probably Marmon flange. Um, they don't work good. They're great in diesel applications, transport trucks, farm equipment, stuff like that. That's kind of where they're used a lot and where they work good. Automotive performance fabrication, throw those things out. Use a, fan, use a flange that has a male and female interlocking and that's actually gonna be your gasket instead of having a gasket that slides in between the flanges. Um, V-band flanges are probably one of the best things ever. So we're gonna tack this on, throw it back on the car. I know that I already want this leg on the back of a 90 degree vent here, so I'm also gonna tack that. So I can pretty much have this on the turbocharger, put this where I want it, threw it in. This is probably gonna be too tiny, that's why I got this one. See, it's gonna be, this is too small, this is too big. We're gonna have to cut the perfect piece of oatmeal there, but we'll get her all dialed in, no problem. As you can see, that nice, perfect fitment. That's because I took my time prepping everything. You look inside the tubes, <sighs> looks good. And take care of the tubes. Be nice to the tubes. They, they will take care they of you. They will take care of you. They will yield beautiful results if you do the right. What stuff. kind of salmons are we seeing These here? These are the pure salmon stack. This is the, this is the salmon stacker right here. This is where we're gonna get all the rainbow trouts just swimming. The old trout stacker. I usually just throw two tacks. When I'm more committed, I go four. Two tacks, I can easily just buzz one with a little carbide or an angle grinder, smack it apart, and uh, do it all over again. Obviously, that's not the goal. You don't want to do that, but we can if we need to. And we're live. I want to tight, but I want it to be able to spin a little bit. Need to see, again, I can't say the word I want to say. I need to see where it all's gonna lay in its home. So again, we have our playroom to move it. We got our Long John Silver. Gonna sneak her into the gallery beside the wastegate where we can kind of sneak her in there. Hear that? That's it, touching the wastegate. We don't want that. So I already know this piece is gonna be way too small because if I have that on there, it's pretty much, like it fits in there, no problem, but I'm pointing right at the wastegate housing. Steve and his big old heifer gate. And then this one is too long, but I can spin this down a bit and then that gives me a little more playroom. Then also puts my 90 on a weirder kind of angle. Cause now 90 is like too much of a bend. Like obviously that, that's gonna be like way too much there. So pull all that out, put that up where I want it. Point this where I want it. It's gonna be tight to the wastegate, but it's not like the end of the world. It's gonna be a little Long John sliver like that to Mr. Long John Silver. That's firewall, that's wastegate. So we're like three fingers. You like that, Matt? Like that yep. measurement? I do like that. Yeah, so we're gonna relay three fingers to a chunk of two. And it's, it's Matt. It's Matt. Snacks! So how are you measuring that, Mike? Three fingers, baby. Is that like metric or imperial fingers? 
they taught us both here, so honestly, I'm not, it's a pick and choose, honestly. That's why all the tape measures have both on them as well. They don't a couple, know what they're doing. Couple finger lengths, eh? Yeah, a couple PSI, a couple pounds, a couple KPA, a couple millimeters, a couple inches, you name it. We got it all over here. Kilometers. The fuck's a kilometer? <laughs> that's what we got. It's less than a mile, and that sucks. I'd rather be faster than slower. You know, you gotta make sure which side is your three fingers. And they're both three fingers, depending on which way you look at it. Set it and forget it. You should probably still watch it though. Just in case it yeets the pipe out. This is gonna have a lot of bleeps in it. Kids? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're on the hole. In the hole. Sorry, Matt. That's not even offensive. That's just funny. Um, we're pretty close. I kind of might want a little more length, but we're getting close to the firewall. I can kind of spin this up a little bit, whoop, like that, and it tucks me closer. That's what I mean. You leave everything loose and you get a good idea of where stuff's going. I'm going to commit to it. I think that's perfect. So I'm going to now remove that V-band that I just clicked on there. Tack this little piece onto that because it's straight. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. I don't need to mark anything straight onto there. Cool. And uh, then I can mock up this 90 in there, make my mark with my Sharpie, toss it all in there. And we're going to have a downpipe put together pretty, pretty efficiently and quick there. Um, really easy application to make one in. Some applications, again, are way harder. There's a lot of room in a one Jay-Z swapped Mustang, that's for sure. Nice, good action. We want this to go to there. A lot of people kind of ask, like, how do you tack this? You don't even need filler rod because, again, you've concentrated so hard on your prep work. Look at that, look at that fitment, dude. Figment, as my buddy Austin would say. Got some nice figment going on. So we're just gonna line it up. Again, it's a straight piece. We don't have any marks. My grubby little handprints are all over these right now too. So I'm gonna clean these all before I properly weld it. Same thing, spray dye and everything. Take it, to the, take it to the sink, waterboard it for a minute. But tack these, toss them back in, keep on rocking. I usually run this. This is like 16 gauge tube, so like 65 amps. Line up your sections, get happy with it. You're just melting them together. Let the gas cool your tack. Bam. Ready to rock. Back to the car. Go your gas cool. Just because they're underpaid and work for housing doesn't mean quality goes out the window every time. It just does happen though. <laughs> it is a thing that happens. 60% of the time works every time. No, it's 90% of the time it works, 60% of the time I think. <laughs> I guess we don't really It smells know. like raw gasoline. <laughs> Milwaukee, just give me tools for free. That'd be sweet. Now let's make them one with each other. So now we're gonna just put some dirt in there where I want to tack, clean that off quick. I'm gonna give a proper clean after. I'm committed with this. I want this to stay there. So now I'm gonna we're gonna four tack, four tack it so it's gonna stay. Oh, that's the sound of me tapping my tungsten with the rod instead of the pipe. Which you'll get that. 60% of the time, <laughs> happens every time. I'm just going for two seconds. No fear, Matt. I'm here, I'm back. Beautiful. 
even. So when you're welding it, it's all even as well. Little fuse tacks. Try not to throw a lot of heat in it. As quick as you can, tack it together. Look at that. Just line her up. Line up your Sharpie marks. Tack not where you have your Sharpie marks so that they're not embedded in the pipe forever. Normally you'd be wearing gloves. Stuff like this, I don't really. You're not throwing too much heat into it. See, it all moves. Do you want to keep it all together? Pick two points, make sure it's good. Put her in her new home. Same thing, we're just repeating the four tacks. And I could do that same other piece over here. Super efficient, nice Saturday start of a downpipe, making it is one part. Welding it takes a lot longer. That's what TIG welding is. There's a lot of work into the prep, a lot of work into making it fit in the application, and then once that's done, now you can weld it all and make it stay. Gonna put an O2 bung somewhere in here, but we're still not done our journey. Gonna toss it back in there, tighten it up where it's close to the wastegate. We'll lift it back up on the hoist and we can see where it's pointing down and kind of start seeing what bends we're gonna need for, need for that. I'll mark that down and I can start chopping up some bends guys so we got the tube in the hole that's exactly where we wanted it so we're gonna lift it up now and we're gonna see exactly where it's pointing how much room we got around our waste gate and other lines stuff that's gonna have to be heat wrapped all that fun stuff I love tubes man I love just putting tubes in holes <laughs> okay <laughs> lift the car cool dude so we got that in there we got our gap on our waste gate you just needed to not touch it i'd rather it be a little closer to the waste gate it's hot it gets hot so it's job then the wiring harness it's not hot that's not its job so we want to keep that away from the hot stuff he's going to rewrap everything make it all fresh man this waste gate is huge it's going to have a huge dump tube just sneaking down there but huge dumper huge dumper on her it is massive <laughs> <laughs> but again, this is just a uh, bend from my box just to kind of gauge and see where we are. That straight length was already in my box rocking. So it could go a little straighter, have another little section. So I'm just gonna, you can keep rocking. I'm just gonna grab a little bend, sneak her over. Cause I cut half out of that one. And I can see if that gives me a little more. Cause this is a 45, it just has a little section on it. I cut it off of something obviously. Didn't like how it was doing its thing and whatever it was doing. So we're just another little straight section. And then that shows us our trajectory kind of where, where this is going. And that honestly looks like it'll work. If we just add another little section, come down, still pointing into the floor a little bit. So then I might cut like a 22 and a half, 25 degree and just have that small bend out of here then a straight section and then another bend just to go with this the floor line and just keep it all tucked up because this is where i'm shooting coming down and then i'm going to angle towards the transmission so i don't mind if it's going to sit over here in this cubby that's kind of where we're we're aiming for big cubby guy my little uh work lion amazon crafting mat and uh this mat's good it's just honestly all mats are good, right, Matt? Yep. You can just kind of line up your center points on it. And it has a lot of different lines all over. I use this thing for a lot of stupid things. Uh, it's just good for laying stuff out. It helps put, like, this is how I see stuff. Like, if that kind of makes sense. Like, when I'm looking at a tube, this is like a projection of what is going on in my head. And I'm kind of being able, that's how I can now look at something and be like, because I, I can kind of already see what the tube is doing. Again, one with the tubes, Matt. Fucking karate kid. <laughs> but I'm finding the center point of the tube. This is a 90 degree tube. I want to cut it in half. So I'm going to find the center point of the tube, pick points on my mat that work good, and I just eye stuff. They sell really nice tools that do this that are really expensive, but this work line mat is like $12.99 from the Jungle website from our boy Jeff. Free shipping. 
comes in a Ford Transit van, packed, full of packages. Do with that, tighten it in. Band saws are life. This is, the small version of this is the number one tool, the one I use in Oshawa. If you wanna start fabbing stuff, you need it. Set it and forget it. Oh, this bad boy. Again, our nice prep work makes this a breeze. Just have a nice, perfect seam all the way around. Nice and even. Gold. Big kid Legos. Not touching the block there, so I'm probably honestly gonna rock that, dude. It's good, it's nice and tight. It's gonna keep us tucked up in here. Room for the V-man so the V-man won't hit the ground and get smashed off and you lose the clamp all the time. So I know that we're good for V-man clearance in here. Now I have to pretty much make a game plan to get my arm up in there with a Sharpie to mark where I want it. So, Sharpie in the mouth, talk like a dentist. Get that all up in there. Oh, nice light, right Steve? Oh, nice for buddy Steve. One, two, and only three on that one. Cool, awesome. So I got three squiggly little marks in there. We're gonna bring her down, tack that, and we pretty much have a completed mocked up downpipe. And then once that downpipe's in there and we make a section out, we know our clearances for the wastegate dump tube. All right guys, so that fits perfect, I'm happy with that. Uh, now is the cleaning it all, welding it all, probably gonna make the dump tube, uh, film some stuff of that, whipping that bad boy up, get everything ready to clean it all up, put it all on the bench, weld it all up. I'll film some of that, it's not the most interesting stuff, we'll put some music over or whatever, just welding tubes, man. It takes a little bit of time to get them all welded out. Again, I feel that this is the most gratifying part. You can just click, 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 pieces come together pretty quick and you're point A to point B, happy camper. Now it's making all look good, which is half the battle. So other than that, on to the next step.